This is Marcel Shane with Laticree Technical Services. Today I'm going to be reviewing our TDS Technical Data Sheet 159, which is going to go over efflorescence, causes, prevention, and removal. The occurrence of efflorescence is a potential problem whenever Portland cement products are used. Efflorescence is a white crystalline deposit which is composed of salts, lime, and or other soluble minerals. Efflorescence may become visible on many types of building product surfaces, such as concrete, stucco, grout, masonry, brick, natural stone, clay, ceramic, and even wood, pretty much any building material that is porous. These salts and minerals are water soluble and generally come from the ground or where cementitious or alkali substances exist. These salts and minerals travel to the surface using water as their transport, where then exposure to the environment evaporates the water and exposure to carbon dioxide changes the deposits chemically leaving behind salts and minerals, that white residue that you see on the surface typically. As you can imagine, there has certainly been many industry articles and resources available that speak on the issue of efflorescence. You could Google them and find a wealth of knowledge on this subject. The main thing to point out though, efflorescence is not considered a defect of the installation materials, but rather a naturally occurring issue common to all Portland cement based products. And again, as you know, you probably see it on stone products concrete sidewalks, stuff like that all the time. So again, it's not a material failure. It's just the nature of the environment we live in, install these products in, use to make these products, and even how we use them. With that said, the best way to prevent efflorescence is going to be to better understand what it is and how it happens. Essentially, three things have to happen for efflorescence to become a problem. One, there must be soluble salts present. These salts are present in the Portland cement products from the manufacturing process. Two, water must be present in the setting bed, mortar bed, grout, substrate, you name it. Three, some type of force, evaporation, gravity, essentially capillary movement has to bring the salts to the surface of the installation. So essentially here the salts are going to be put into a solution and somehow brought to the surface. Again, usually capillary movement. And when you do see this, essentially all three of these things have occurred. The water evaporates, the salts remain on the surface where they react with the carbon dioxide in the air, and then that reaction actually turns those salts into a visible white material that collects on the surface. Naturally eliminating any of these three needed circumstances will eliminate the occurrence of efflorescence, but that's extremely hard to do in the environments that we live in, right? You figure you're going to put this stuff in, maybe in a bathroom there's going to be moisture that's going to have that capillary movement. These types of salts and potential vehicles to leave that white residue are in many products that we use in buildings. So it may not even be a part of the material that you installed. It could be a runoff, say, from a brick wall or something like that that's leading to it. But I just make that clear to mention, even if you do clean this, it's important to note that efflorescence may occur again if all three of these factors which cause it aren't dealt with, even if a suitable sealer is used or proper maintenance is done routinely. Again, not a fault of the products used to install it or even the products installed. Most likely it's just the nature of the environment that it's in. But what can we do to help minimize the occurrence of efflorescence. The use of a polymer fortified thin set will certainly help minimize it. Uh, the more modified, the better is what we typically see. So something like our 254 Platinum, 257 Titanium, or even our Multimax Light could help minimize these occurrences. Also using a calcium aluminate cement-based grout would help. Something like our Permacolor Select or Permacolor Options. And as you can imagine, a big one due to moisture adding to the likelihood of the efflorescence would be to slope the area to evacuate water from the surface to the sides of the insulation. Long story short, if most of the moisture moves away from the slab, then there's less of a chance for efflorescence to occur. If doing an exterior installation over an occupied space, we would certainly recommend something like our plaza and deck system. This system will prevent much of the moisture from staying in the mortar bed as it allows for the runoff water that gets beneath the mortar bed to evacuate, thus leaving less moisture in that slab which will in hand help minimize the occurrence of efflorescence down the road. Unfortunately, at this point, there's no clear-cut answer for the total elimination of efflorescence, though. The use of an epoxy setting material, something like our Lat Epoxy 300 or Lat Epoxy BioGreen 300 adhesives, may also help reduce efflorescence. But the truth of the matter is, is that there's no guarantee that efflorescence won't occur. What do we do when it does occur? Let's first talk about removal of efflorescence from surfaces that are not sensitive to acid. Reason being is that most types of efflorescence are acid sensitive, and because they're typically a buildup of lime, salts, and other soluble mineral deposits, they usually dissolve when put in contact with acid. So because of this, we would recommend something like our Stone Tech Restore Acidic Cleaner, which is essentially a heavy-duty acidic cleaner and will certainly work well in dissolving and removing efflorescence in most cases. As always, it's certainly strongly recommended that you conduct a test area in an inconspicuous part of the install to determine suitability and acceptability. Acid can etch material sometimes, so you do do not want to learn this the hard way by spreading it on the entire surface. So take a little corner first, make sure it's not reacting with the stone or the surface that you're putting it on, and then proceed from there. As always, you're going to want to make sure you mask off the project, protect any surrounding areas that need to be covered with plastic, tar paper, you name it. You don't want acidic corrosion happening on anything around the repair. We always suggest starting at the light duty mix solution. Stronger dilutions can be used if needed, but start in the low end, see how it works, and then go from there to determine if you need a stronger dilution. You can apply this cleaner to the surface using a clean mop, towel, sponge, or sprayer. Once you get the cleaner on the surface, you're going to want to agitate it with something like a stiff white nylon scrub brush. 
white nylon pad, or appropriate floor machine, maybe like a swing machine with a white pad on it. Do not use colored pads on these machines if using them, as that can potentially lead to color bleeding and actually soaking into the substrate. You'll then want to make sure that you certainly rinse the area with a damp and clean mop, sponge, towel, wet vac. Make sure you don't over apply the rinse water here. As we mentioned, water is one of the key factors in the development of efflorescence, so you don't want to reintroduce that vehicle back into the source that you just helped fix. So you may have to pay a little more attention to the detail here, right? You want to make sure you rinse it well enough to remove any cleaner residue, but you also don't want to overwet the surface. This is an important one. Always let the surface completely dry to make sure that the results are acceptable. Sometimes you may have to repeat this step as necessary if you do see a light efflorescent haze or appearance still on the surface before you proceed to the next step of your maintenance. And then finally, sealing the surface using a StoneTech impregnating or penetrating sealer, such as our StoneTech Bulletproof, StoneTech Stone Tile and Grout Sealer, StoneTech Impregnator Pro Sealer, or our StoneTech Heavy Duty Exterior Sealer, should certainly minimize efflorescence from reoccurring. Again, there's no guarantee on this. It should help minimize it. But if you don't fix one of the main sources that's causing the efflorescence, it's certainly going to come back. It's just a matter of how soon. At that point, you may just have to know that that's how that area of the building is going to react. And it just needs to be included as routine maintenance, whether that's every five years, 10 years, you name it. I just want to touch on the removal of efflorescence from surfaces which are acid sensitive, i.e. marble, limestone, concrete, travertine, etc. A lot of times those stone surfaces that are going to be used as finished stone are certainly going to be sensitive to acid. So on surfaces like this, the Restore Acidic Cleaner is not going to be your best choice. That can actually etch the stone. So certainly always do a test area first. If you're going to try to use an acidic cleaner on one of these surfaces, you do not want to etch the entire surface and make the problem much bigger than it already was. But if it is acid sensitive, we then suggest on flat surfaces to remove this efflorescence by using a dry white nylon scrub pad by hand or using a rotary sander with a white nylon pad attached. Oftentimes, most of the efflorescence deposits can be removed following this process. Again, making sure that it's not damaging the face of the stone. If this process doesn't completely remove the efflorescence or on textured surfaces where the above step is not possible, additional treatment will be required. Use of something like our Stone Tech Polishing Powder for polished surfaces or our Stone Tech Honing Powder for unpolished surfaces. These two products contain abrasives, so it's strongly recommended to conduct the test area to see the effect on the surface finish. As always, mask off and protect any surrounding areas. Apply the polishing powder or the honing powder to the affected surface. Add water until you achieve a milk-like consistency. And then from there, lightly agitate with a stiff white nylon scrub brush, white nylon pad, or appropriate floor machine. And then again, as mentioned before, make sure you rinse the area with a lightly damp and clean mop, sponge, towel, you name it. Again, making sure that you remove all residue, but also do not overwet the surface. And as always, you're going to want to let that surface dry completely to determine the results of the process that you just did. And then from there, you could further try to minimize the efflorescence from occurring again by again using one of our penetrating sealers, such as our Stone Tech Bulletproof, Stone Tech Stone Tile and Grout Sealer, Stone Tech Impregnator Pro Sealer, or our Stone Tech Heavy Duty Exterior Sealer, which again should minimize efflorescence from reoccurring. The tips provided in this video should provide you a very sound removal process and steps to help minimize the occurrence of efflorescence for years to come. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful and best of luck.